Lord, we thank you, Lord, we love you, Jesus. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen.
show and meet all those in those 127 provinces, and they had a party, and it was like seven days, and all of a sudden, and he even told the queen, he said, Queen Vestai, you have your own function. But somewhere down the line, he decided that he wanted Queen Vestai to join him. And we could take the tiger shadow, the king's voice, as the Lord's voice for the sake of preaching. How many times the Lord may have called us when we thought that we didn't want to come? Mm -hmm. How many times he may have hearkened to us to do certain things and <clears throat> it just wasn't the right time in our time? Yeah. How many of you know there's consequences when the king calls you? Mm -hmm. How many of you know there's consequences when the king bids you to come to the inner court and we refuse? And on that particular day, for some reason or another, he sent for Queen Vesta. And as he sent for her, she, whatever reason within herself, she said, just tell the king I'm not coming. Hmm. Come on now, this is the queen. Amen. Come on now, this is the king. What you're saying, preacher, I'm saying we can never get too high in who we are for when the Lord called us to do something. Yeah. We can never get too caught up on our last name or our job position or the money we may have in the bank and when the king called us. Amen? Amen. I want you to know that when the king called, it's time for us to kneel down and bow down and do what the king asked us to do. Amen. The Bible said the king was very wrong. But it was the first time that this happened to the king. Not only it happened to the king, but it happened in front of all the other kings and all the other princes and all the other noblemen within that 127 provinces. So at that time, the king said, now, he spoke to the wise men and he spoke to the servant. He said, now, what am I supposed to do when the king called a queen? Come on now, I'm going to preach in a minute. Hmm. And she don't come. All of a sudden, they began to say it is written. When the queen refused to come, that she is cast aside and no longer queen, and she is put out of the kingdom. And the king of Zaria said that sounded good. And from that day on, they began to look for another queen. He said, go in all the province. He said, go in all the places. And he said, prepare me a queen that uh, she may come when I call her. Hallelujah, Jesus. How many of you know if you don't want to be used by God, God going to use somebody? How many of you know if you don't want to go, God going to send somebody? How many of you know if you don't want to pray, God going to have somebody else to pray? But his will will be done. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on. There are four main characters in this book. You have Azariah the king, who is a powerful king of 127 prophets. You have Esther, who all of a sudden is a nobody and who's going to become the queen of the day. Then you have Haman, who is the wicked, evil servant, full of pride and, and full of evilness and full of hate for the Jews. Amen. And then you have Mordecai, that plain, ordinary, old-school preacher, that old-school, simple uncle who took Esther in. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's a complicated book. It's seven chapters, but then the day I just want to walk through some things to take a nugget here and a nugget there so we can glean and find some things that's going to help us understand our position when the king called. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at verse uh, let's look at verse 12 again. That's the chapter 1 verse 12. But the queen best I refused to come at the king's command by his chamber. Therefore, the king was very wroth, and his anger burned in him. And I gave you the same way how he found out what he had to do, and they made a decree, and they, and they got rid of her, and, and they said it wouldn't be good if she don't come because it's going to set a bad example for all the others in the kingdom. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Going with me now to the selection of, uh, let's go to section uh, chapter 2. Hallelujah, Jesus. Chapter 2. Look at verse 17. 
It was 12 months of preparation for the king to find a new bride, a new queen. And through those 12 months, ladies on top of ladies, and there were virgins on top of virgins, and women on top of women, that was all being prepared for the king. And finally, after 12 months, it was Esther's turn, and she could have went before the king with anything, and they could have adorned her with anything that she wanted so she could be beautiful for the king. Go on somewhere with this. And look what happened. And after these things, King Herod promote, <clears throat> and, and, and what happened in chapter 2, verse 17. 15 verse. Bear with me. I'm trying to bounce back and forth because I want to get to some certain things before I begin to preach. Now when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abelai, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her from his daughter, was come to go into the king, she required nothing but what egg of the king chamber the keeper of, of the women appointed. In other words, she wouldn't have all kinds of things that she needed. She just wanted to be herself. She said, Lord, this is who I am. This is what I am. That the Lord was able to give her and to do things, but she took her just as she was. And we got to understand that Esther wasn't anybody special. Esther's mother and father had got killed. And, he, and Mordecai, her uncle, took her in and raised her, but he taught her the things of God. Amen? Amen. And the title of my thing was Wrong Place at the Wrong Time, but I'm going to show you how that came to pass and it worked out for Esther and Mordecai and the children of the Jews. All of a sudden, the Bible said, the late verse in 17, it said, And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight. More than all the virgins, so that he set a raw crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Bethsaida. Bethsaida didn't want to come. For some reason, she was caught up in who she was and all the things that she had, and maybe I don't know what got into her, but she refused. But how many of you know that God will remove certain people or certain things for you to obtain it for the benefit of God's kingdom? Amen. Amen. Might be applying for a job, and you might say, "Oh, I, I'll never get promoted." And the next thing you know, somebody has left. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Ooh, you might want a vehicle, and, and you might look at it and you say, "Oh, that price is a little bit too high." And you ride that car, and next thing you know, it went down on you. Yeah. God got a plan that you can't Amen. see. Amen. He got a way of using things and making things happen that you can't see. Amen. How many times you might have thought you was in the wrong place? But you was in the right place. Yeah, come on. Man, if I wouldn't have been here, I wouldn't have got this blessing. Yeah. How many times you went to church and you might have thought, man, I could have been somewhere else. But then I got a blessing. I got a healing. I got a word from God. I got my mind and peace of mind when I went to church. That's true. Come on. The enemy always make you believe things that you do for God, things that you do in righteousness is the wrong place and the wrong thing to do. Come on. But how many of you know you can never go wrong doing right? Yeah. And that's where Mordecai was. Mordecai was a righteous man. Mordecai, uh, all he did was just did the same old thing every day and sit in the king's gate and pray and mind his business. But it paid off. Amen. Well, how it paid off, Richard? As you begin to see in the book of Esther, after that side got kicked out, you know, everybody got their own little crowd. Amen. Esther, my, uh, best I had a couple of servants. They were mad at the king. And they wanted to take the king out for best I. Look at it in chapter 2 with verse 21. In those days while Mordecai sat in the king's day, according to people, this is the wrong place to be sitting. You're not supposed to be sitting in the king's gate. Haman tried to run him away from the king's gate for many days. But Mordecai would go and sit in the king's gate and he would do what he do. He would pray and just, just be Mordecai. But today he was in the wrong place with the right time. Because look what happened. In those days while Mordecai sat in the king's gate, two of the king's chamber, big thing, look at that, big thing, <laughs> and to rest of those who kept the door were wrong and started to lay hand on King Ezra's. They was mad. 
They lie to whisper to themselves. Man, he got rid of our queen. Oh. Now we gotta stand up here and we gotta take care of this. But we ought to put something on him. And they sought to lay hand on the king. But Mordecai heard. The Bible says Mordecai heard and look what happened. And the thing was known to Mordecai who took in the Esther the queen. And the Esther certified the king thereof and Mordecai saying, in other words, she went and told the king. She said, King, we have, we have a power. Paraphrase. <laughs> Two of your bodyguards want to kill me. But my uncle Mordecai heard them. They thought he was in the wrong place. Yeah. They thought he was just sitting there. But God is working the plan out yeah. because this is going to play out in the long run when we get to the middle and the end of Esther. We're going to see that what he heard, even though he was in the wrong place, he was there at the right time. And the Bible says that the next thing you know, the king called Haman. And Haman took care of those two men and hung them. But the king didn't know Mordecai had told him. Hmm. No. So Haman got the glory. Haman got promoted. Haman got advanced over all the other servants in the kingdom. But you see, Haman had a problem with Mordecai. He didn't like Mordecai being in the gate. He didn't know all the things that Mordecai had going with him. Verse 3. Good night with me. I know I'm doing a lot of reading. I know I'm doing a lot of talking. But we're going to get to the summary later on. Verse 3 and 1. Chapter 3 and 1. And these things. Did King Ezra promote Haman, the son of Haman, Agai, and advance him and set him above all princes that were with him? And the king's servants that were with the king in the king's gate bowed and reverent Haman, for the king had so commanded concerning him. Now here we come with us. But Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence. Remember, Mordecai is a Jew. Mordecai understands, like Daniel understood. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego understood. Yeah. How many of you know? It's not the place where you are, but it's the principles that you keep. You don't have to be in the church sanctuary to live for God. You can live fun on your job. Yeah. You can live fun with your house. You can live fun wherever you go. Why? Because if it's in you, it's in you. And if you're going to do right and be a Christian, it don't matter who is looking, you're going to do what you got to do. Mordecai caught himself in that position and he said, well, no, Haman, I understand all what you did, but I'm not bowing down to you. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said, Haman was wrong. Then the king's servant, which were in the king's gate, said unto Mordecai, why transgressed thou the king's commandment? In other words, they asked him like they asked Daniel, Daniel, why are you the one bow down? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, why y'all don't want to bow down? Hear me, O Israel, the Lord, thy God is one. He said, I, I serve one God. Yeah. I honor the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. I won't bow down to no statue. I won't bow down to man. I'm going to bow down to Jesus. And guess what? If you don't bow down, the Bible says one day, every knee shall bow. Amen. And every tongue shall confess Amen. that Jesus Christ is Lord. So Mordecai didn't put himself in no different position. He didn't say, oh, now that Esther's queen, let me change my lifestyle. Come on now. Because what you have to understand, God knows what you're going through when you go through it. Yeah. He knows what you're going to stand on and when you won't stand. Yeah. But I'm trying to let you know, if you just stand for what you believe in, if you just hold on to that nail-scarred hand, regardless how the situation looks, Regardless how man trying to put pressure on you, you just hold your ground and say, I'm going to stand for Jesus. I'm going to stand for the word of God. I'm going to hold on to the word of God. And just by a few minutes, we're going to see Amen. where it paid off. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. All of a sudden, Haman got upset. It's all in the book of Esther. You can read these things for yourself. Haman got upset and he went to King Aris. He said, King, there's some people that's not following the script. Go on. Paraphrase. There are some holy roles and there's some folks they, they don't dance to my music. They don't bow down to me like the rest of the people. And they got this special one called Mordecai. I just can't stand him, King. He sits in the King gate. Don't want to get out my way. And he rolled his eyes when I pass by. Go on. Saying, well, who is this? He said, 
said, well, do what you got to do. Mm. So all that did was open the door for him, that old evil servant. And he ran and he had the king sign a decree. Mm. And he said, king, I'm going to need a little money, maybe about 10,000 pieces of silver. We're going to put out a decree that all those who don't bow down like Mordecai. You see, on first, he was ready to take Mordecai out by himself. But what happened was, his servant said, hold on, before you hit Mordecai, you better see how many other Jews that's around these 127 crowds. Mm -hmm. See, they, look, they were looking at full counts. <laughs> and they were more like saying, hey, he's not by himself. They got millions of them. So he had to try and work on another plan. Hallelujah. Look, what, look how he said it. Chapter 3 and verse 6. Verse 5. And when Haman saw that Mordecai bowed not, nor did him reverence, then Haman was full of wrath. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for he had shown him the people that Mordecai. You know, see, I just said it. He said, well, I'll just take him out. And he said, no, Haman, you're going to cause a problem. You don't know who you're messing with. You see, the enemy might see you by yourself, but you're not by yourself. Ooh, prayers going out for you. Amen. Folks joining and believing together that everything going to be all right. Your situations that you don't know that God is still working on is being worked on. Amen. And you're not by yourself. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's try to do verse. Let's go to verse four. Verse four. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, after Mordecai realized that the king had gave Haman the authority to do what he had to do, and he realized that Haman had put out a bounty on him and told him, whoever killed all these Jews, you're going to be 10,000 pieces of silver. And this is verse, chapter 4, verse 1. And when Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and a bitter cry. Hallelujah, Jesus. And it came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. You see, now Mordecai ready to break all the rules. <laughs> First he was in the king's gate. Now he was going to the king's gate crying with sackcloth. Amen? Amen. But how bad? You want what you need. You're ready to go against the grain of your flesh and pray for a loved one in the midst of others. Amen. You're willing to hold your hands up in the middle of a parking lot where everybody's staring at you and you know you need a healing yeah. or you need a blessing. Just keep it as simple. Are you still man enough and woman enough and big boy and girl enough to bow your head down in a restaurant and hold your family hands and pray and thank the Lord for your meal. Oh, are you going to let shame grip you? Are you going to let poor pressure grip you? Are you just going to do what you got to do? I'm trying to let you know it is not no time now to fit soft on the gospel. It is time for us to stand and look the enemy in the eye and say, I'm a child of the king. I believe in the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know I might not do what you do, and I'm not condemning you, but I won't lower my standards uh, to raise yours. Uh, I'm going to let you know uh, when it's time to worship, I'm going to worship. When it's time to praise him, I'm going to praise him. Yeah. When it's time to do right, when I can do right, I'm going to do right. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Mordecai, I want to give the green. All of a sudden, the word got back to Esther. It's all in the book. And she said, she said her servant, said, go and ask my uncle Mordecai what's wrong. You see, Esther hadn't revealed who she was. She didn't have to because nobody asked. And she became queen. And she didn't want to change. But she already knew that there were some things that couldn't be done. And one of them would be in the city with a sad call. And he went and asked Mordecai. Hallelujah, Jesus. Verse 5, 4 and 5, let me tell you. They called Esther for Hesed, one of the king's chamberlain, whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know 
what it was and why it was. In other words, she sent a servant. She said, she said, go ask my uncle why he's crying like that. See, she understood. She knew growing up with her uncle that he taught her when you have a problem that is serious and it's something that God needs to intervene and you don't know how to intervene, you'll go before him and weeping and crying and sad talk. Go now. See, she grew up as his niece because his mom and dad died and he took her. And when he went to church, she went to church. And when he prayed, he, she prayed. And when he made sacrifices, she made sacrifices. So even though she became the palace, she didn't forget train up a child in the way that she go, and when they get old they want to depart from the faith. Yeah. What you say the preacher? Teach your children. What's wrong, mama? Well, I'm crying man, because I'm hurt, but I got a problem, and guess what? We gonna pray right now, because I know Jesus is able. What's wrong, daddy? Yeah. Daddy crying, son, but that don't mean I'm weaker, because when I'm weaker, I'm stronger. I'm trying to let you know, violence is not always the way, huh? Cussing is not always the way. Fighting is not always the way. Sometimes it's men. We gotta cry and get down on our knees and say, Lord, I don't know what the situation is, but I know a God that's able. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Yeah. You see, we worry about, like, we, I'm glad how the election went, but I'm just gotta let you know uh, that's time to go past. Uh, I'm trying to worry. I'm not worried, I'm trying to wonder. What's going to happen today? How many people is really going to thank him for being alive? How many people that's going to thank him for putting food up on their table, even if it's a slice of bread and a glass of water? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. So Hattash went for to Mordecai to the street, another city, which was before the king's gate. Mordecai told him all the different things. Amen. Amen. And then verse 9, and Hattash came and told us the words of Mordecai. And that's the statement that Hattash and gave him a commandment unto Mordecai. And this is what we read in the beginning. And telling you what he did, he said, tell Esther what Haman is trying to do. And she don't have to go to the king and get us some help. Ooh. And that's where verse 11 come in that we read in the beginning. Look at verse 11. Now it's going to come in. And that's where my title come in. Wrong place but the right time. Check this out. And she, and that's the state that Haman and gave him the commandment to Mordecai. And all king's servants and people of the king's providence do know that whosoever whether man or woman shall come into the king into the inner courts who is not called. See, that's from me. Vesta lost her queenship for not going when she was called. Now Esther have a dilemma. Come on, church, to go to him without being called. Oh, I feel it now. You see what happened? That's why my title was Wrong Place, but the right time. I know it's not customary, Esther, for you to go before the king without him calling you. Well, why would you have to make up your mind? Because this is imperative. You, let me not get ahead of myself. You know, my preacher just say, we're going to work it to the end. Let me get it. Here we go. Look at verse 11 in the middle. Shall come into the king, into the inner court, who is not called, there is a law of his to be put him to death, except such of whom the king shall hold out the subject that he may live. But I have not been called to come in the king these 30 days. And they told to Mordecai, that's the words, they were, she said, tell my uncle, the king haven't called me in 30 days. And it's not part of the queenship for me to just bust in. <laughs> hey, King, how you doing? They have a protocol for the queen. Yeah. And it's like this, um, when he called me, I come. And when he don't call me, I don't go visit. But now you're asking me to go visit him? 
go and call and talk to him? I got to think about this one. Hmm. Watch for that. Wrong thing for the right time. Let's have a church. Verse 13. Then Mordecai commanded to answer, Esther, think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Ooh, he brought her back. <laughs> he said, sister girl, let me tell you something. You might be queen. Come on now. But you're still a Jew. Hmm. What you saying, Richard? You might be the president of the king, of the governor, of the mayor of the city, of the president of a bank, of a principal at a school, or whatever, or a doctor, a teacher, a janitor. You might be whatever you are, but you're still a human being. And one day, you will still have to go before the king. And if you go before the king, and you're not right, According to the king's chronicles, but we're going to see where that's now playing in a little while. You're going to have to suffer the consequences. Yeah. Now, I'm trying to let you know Esther was in a situation where the Lord was just confirming and telling her, Look what our uncle said with wisdom. Go ahead, on, preacher. I will in a few minutes. Look at verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace, at this time. Wrong place, but the right time. He said, Esther, if you don't say nothing now, we don't need you to say nothing tomorrow. I didn't need you to say nothing when you first became queen. Come on, church. Today is the day of salvation. Yeah. I need a blessing today. You need a touch today. You need some love today. Hallelujah, Jesus. And here we go. He said, For if thou all together holdest thy peace this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. Wrong place, but the right time. He said, Esther, listen to what Onk is saying. If you refuse to go before the king, if you refuse to open your mouth, God gonna send help from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And you still gonna be in your situation. Mm -hmm. What you saying, preacher? Well, it's still a word about what can happen. It's still a word about what might happen. I'm gonna take this day this morning and say thank you, Jesus, for being in my life. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up another day. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for putting the hands around my family, for putting the hands Thank you, Lord, for being a God that I don't see, but a God that I believe in. Yeah, come on. For such a time as this. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. Look what happened after he told her that. He, and then he said, But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. Well, Uncle Mordecai said, Now, yes, if you don't do it to help us, God's going to send some help. But he's not going to help you. You're going to be on your own. If you leave from the covering of the blood, if you try and live this life without God in your life, you're on your own. And I don't need to be on my own now. Because there's too many things that's going on that I can't see. Mm. I need a God that don't sleep. Yeah. To be watching over me. I need a, a God that's everywhere so he could guide my steps. Yeah. For the Bible says the steps of a righteous man is all about the Lord. And if I don't know where to walk, I need him to tell me where to walk. Come on, come on. And he was just telling Esther, Esther, look what he said. This is the key in right here. Here you go. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom? For such a time as this. Woo -hoo -hoo. Esther, when your mom and daddy died, we didn't know what we was going to be. Uncle Mordecai took you in as a daughter, and I showed you and raised you the best I could. When you were just a servant in the house of Vesta and walking around as a little maid, we didn't know that one day the king was going 
going to choose you to be queen. Come on now. What you saying, preacher? You got to just keep living your life. You don't know what God has for you. You don't know when your time going to come from the pit to the palace, Joseph. Amen. You don't know when your time going to come from being a shepherd of a, 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 a sheep to being a king, David. Oh, I'm trying to let you know. I'm preaching encouragement this morning. But I'm trying to let you know, don't let the situation dictate who you are. Yeah. For the Bible says, so is a man thinking, so is he. And you have to understand, Queen Esther, God is going to deliver the Jews one way or the other. What you're saying, preacher, the church has already won the battle. You just have to keep going to the wall. I'll put it the other way. The wall is already won. You just have to keep going to the battle. She didn't go just straight to her flesh. 
Verse 15. 4 and 15. Then Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. She said, Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan. And fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, day or night. I also and my maids will fast likewise, and so I will so will I go unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, <laughs> I perish. I think she got the revelation. I think the message was received loud and clear. Yeah. And Esther said, I got you on. And like young people say, I feel you. <laughs> Boy, that's how I understand what you're saying. But this is what y'all need to do to help me get ready to fight this fight. We go fast on this thing. And I'm willing to go down, but let's go down the way God expects us to go down. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, is your God able to deliver me? We're not afraid of Cain to answer this. We know he can. But if he don't, we're not going to bow down anyway. Thank you! What you think? Well, I think I'm going to still pray three times a day until y'all throw me in the lion's den. And guess what? I'm going to sleep on the line and wake up in the morning and pray again. How many of you know the situation you're in? It's not a situation. But you have to look to the hill where your help coming from. And begin to acknowledge and say, Lord, I'm going to fast on this situation. I'm going to pray on this situation. I know you're able to deliver me, but if you don't, I'll accept the consequences in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. And how many of you know if it's not your time <laughs> to go nowhere? It's not your time? Yeah, yeah. Oh, preacher, how do you know? How many times Jesus told him, my time is not yet at hand? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about all that noise they make. <laughs> See all the rocks they pick up? Watch this. Disappeared right on the big miss. <laughs> when it's your time, it's your time. Amen. Let's see, let's get to the end of this thing for a while. Let's see what he's gonna go with. Hallelujah, Jesus. But you still got that character, Haman, in the midst of the situation. So here's sister else to go after the fast. Here we go. Now it came to pass on the third day, I was after the fast, that Esther put on her royal apparel. And stood in the inner court of the king's house, over against the king's house, and the king sat upon the royal throne in the royal house, over against the gate of the house. Wrong place, but the right time. Queen Esther, where you going? I'm going to meet the king. But Queen, he didn't call for you. You remember when we started this fast three days ago? He had to call me then. But it's for such a time as this that I'm queen. You have to understand, they want to destroy the church. Mm -hmm. They want to destroy my uncle Mordecai and all of the Jews and all the relatives and all the families and friends that I love. And now, I'm going to get my robe. Give me what I need and pray for me. Here they go. So she went before the king. And she had learned in my man, if I perish, I perish. And look at verse 2. 5 and 2. And it was so. When the king saw Esther the queen standing in the court, that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of his scepter. Now, that was a little tense moment. And I'm sure going to know what we're going to do with the Lord telling us to do. We had a voice of finding us and telling us, you crazy. I wouldn't do that if I was you. Ah, you gonna get in, you gonna be in trouble, you gonna die. Yeah. And when the queen stood, favor went before her. Come on now. And the Bible said, you remember when I preached last week about it started with a look? Yeah. And when the king looked at her, you, you got, still got somebody in your life that you look at and in your heart skip a beat. Come on, y'all young brothers, y'all young husbands and wives and old husbands and wives. You still got that when they, when they call your name or they might call you a boo or a babe or this or that. You know, you get a little pep 
happens is step. When the king saw her, and then somebody wanted to whisper, King, did you call her? And he never answered. He just looked at her. She was already pretty and beautiful to look upon. But the glory of God after that three day fast and sanctification, she only had not only had the physical beauty, but she had the power of the Holy Ghost going in that room with her. Ooh, hallelujah, Jesus. And the king, look what happened. I'll show you how good it was to the king. Then said the king unto her, What wilt thou, Queen Esther? And what is thy request? It shall be given thee to half of the kingdom. The king, the king ready to give her half of his kingdom. Woo! But look at that. Girl, you look so good. You can have everything I got up to half. King was, the king was Egypt, so she got favor on top of favor. But in her wisdom, she didn't just come right out and see what she needed. Because she had to bring it to the king in the same way that God brought it to her. And let me show you what happened. <laughs> queen was wise and all of a sudden she began to work on her setup plan. Haman had a setup, but not Queen Esther. Got a reversal on that. So Paraphrase was in there. She said, she said, King, I want to have a feast. And I want you to invite Haman <laughs> to our party. Mm -hmm. You see, that's all. She said, no. But when we had the party, I'm going to tell you why Haman is there, what we want. See, she already knew. But then all of a sudden, God began to work on the king. You remember we preached that God control the hearts of men. God can go where we don't go. And watch the next chapter after she said that. Look at chapter 6, verse 1. The night before the feast, on that night, could not the king sleep. Come on now. <laughs> Ooh, the king was thinking about Esther. He thought about what she had seen. But then besides Esther, the Lord put Mordecai on his mind. And watch what happened. On that night, could not the king sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of chronicles that they read before the king. You remember I told you that he was going to have to read the chronicles? In other words, bring some record books. <laughs> I had heard that name Mordecai before. Who is this guy? And when they began to read, to tell him what it was, and watch what happened. And the king said, and look, in verse 2, and it was found written that Mordecai had told a big thing. A big thing wanted to kill the king <laughs> and to rest. Two of the king's chambers, the keepers of the door, who sought to lay hands on King Herod. You remember when I told you that Mordecai heard him when he was at the wrong place? Laying at the gate, but it was the right time because he heard. Now the plot thickens because now the king not only have a reason to love Esther, but to give favor to Mordecai. You see how you never know how life going to line up. You just have to live each and every day and let God do what he has to do to put the pieces together in the puzzle. Amen. And watch this. And the king said, what honor and dignity have been done to Mordecai after this? Then said the king's servant that ministered unto him, there was nothing done for him. In other words, did we give him a reward? No. Did we put him in a house or give him some new garments? We didn't do nothing, king. And the king said, hold on. <laughs> Call him who's in charge of taking care of this business. Now, watch how the script gonna flip. You see, God's gonna show up and show out sometime. Yeah. No weapon form against you shall prosper. And that's about to happen a boomerang move about to take place. Oh. Watch this. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah, Jesus. And the king said, Who is it in the court? Now Haman was come into the outward court of the king's house, 
to speak to the king to hang Mordecai. Mm -hmm. Wrong place, hell, <laughs> but at the right time. Right. You about to tell me you ready to hang a man <laughs> that called my queen Esther and told her about two thugs that wanted to kill me? Now you coming here to hang this man? Come on. Now the day too soon, he didn't See, he didn't dream about Mordecai before Esther was queen. Come on, y'all. Because it wouldn't have had no value. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have had no power. See, the Lord has something for you, but he still might be holding it up to have that power. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell that right connection. Oh, that's how he worked. Come on. He may not come when we want him, but he's always on time. Mm -hmm. Ever thought you missed something? But to realize what you missed wasn't what you needed. And then when you go back, you get bigger than what you was going to get the first time. Yeah. Whatever that thing was. Come on. Well, mighty God, we serve. Amen. Let's have fun with it before we close out. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, Haman was coming to the outer courts of the house to speak to the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. Now, <clears throat> before he got to this, in the books before, he had been home and bragged and told his wife, and he said, Ooh, y'all just don't know what happened. I'm invited to a feast, and Queen Esther asked me to come. She never asked nobody else to come and sit with the king for the parties but the king. So he was saying how good he was and how they were giving him all kind of favor, but Sister Esther was ready to set him up. But his wife, and then after he made that statement, it's in the word, read for yourself in your time. He walked by the gate, and guess who was in the gate? Mordecai. Mm. And he looked at Mordecai, and I'm sure he could have kicked him. And Mordecai didn't bow down, didn't even tell him hello. And the Bible said, with all this that I'm getting from the queen and the king, it don't mean nothing to me as long as Mordecai is alive. That's why he went over here to get Mordecai out of the way. Mm. But God already had a plan. Oh. Here we go. Verse 5. And the king's servant said unto him, Behold, Haman standing in the court. <clears throat> and the king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in, and the king said unto him, Before Haman could open his mouth, the king spoke first. Not knowing what Haman wanted to ask, and Haman didn't know that the king couldn't sleep and then read the books on Mordecai. Set up. And here we go. Show you how to backfire on. So Haman came in and the king said unto him, What shall be done unto the man who the king delighted to honor? He asked this to Haman. Now Haman thought in his heart, To whom the king delighted to honor more than him. Haman was like, Oh man, the king ready to give me some more honor. He thinking the king talking about him. But deep down, the king talking about Mordecai. Now, the reason this is funny, because if he would have knew he was thinking about Mordecai, he would have said that. But because it's the loss of on his own flesh. You see, that's why self-evaluation ain't no good. When you look in the mirror and we say, well, come on, mirror, be honest. Now tell me the truth, what you think? We already know the mirror not going to say that. But you ask a child, how this look? Oh, no, Pete, you color fight. <laughs> oh no, that don't look good, Uncle Pete. And you be like, oh yeah, that look good? No, it don't look good. Are you giving something to me? How that taste? Ugh, that's nasty. <laughs> Children will tell you the truth. Yeah. So Mordecai just knew. Ooh, man, the king, king, well, this piece gonna be nice. Man, the king, let me, so let me let me set myself up so I can look good before the feast. So look what he did. No one had anything on him. And Haman answered the king. For the man whom the king delighted to honor, let the royal apparel be brought which the king used to wear, and the horse that the king riding on, and the crown royal which is set up on his head. Now that's a crown. Now that ain't no Bible. That's a, that's a crown that he put on his head. And let this apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of the one the king most noble princess. And they, they may array the man with whom the king delighted to honor, 
and bring him on horseback through the street of the city and proclaim before him, thus said it be done to the man whom the king delighted to honor. Oh, he, he ready for a good little surprise here. He set it up. He said, King, this is how you do it. You get your best wardrobe and put it on that man. You get your finest horse and let that man ride on that horse. And then for that day, you take the crown off of your head and let that man wear that crown. See, he wants to be king. See, he know what you want to be. He wants to be the king. Man. And the king. And watch what happens. Boy, this is boy, can you imagine this? Then the king said unto Haman, Make haste. In other words, hurry up, Haman. And take the apparel and the horse as thou hast said. And do even so to Mordecai the Jew. What? Can you imagine how Mordecai felt when he heard the king say that? But it's too late, man. You done already put it out there. And this is just the beginning of your end. <laughs> so now, the one he hates, the one he ready to kill, he got to dress him up, pick him up, put him on the king's horse, put a crown on his head, and walk with him in a parade, saying, this is the man that the king honored. And all the providers know the hate that Mordecai, that Haman had for Mordecai. Because he was the one who wrote the letter and sent a text and sent a fact and sent an email. Or oh, I can't stand him. I can't stand him. They make me sick. Church, church, church. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, they make me sick. They get blessed. They still make me sick. And then all of a sudden now, can you go pray for me? I can pray for you. Thank you for long with us up, up, tell me. Turn about his feathers, but with God, he don't play. Yeah. And now, Esther is just laying in the back. And here comes with it, verse 12. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate. Now that was after the parade. Mordecai didn't change. He didn't say, nah, 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 oh, nah. He got off the horse. He got back into his old clothes and went back to the gate of the king's gate. And they'll come in. <laughs> Ooh, you know how sometimes we in our own flesh and self be doing things and things happen and then it backfire and it fall back on us? Amen. The Bible talks about the day one pit, you better dig two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. I don't know about you, but I know what goes around, comes around. And the Bible says we shall reap what we sow. That's why I need to watch what I sow and what kind of seeds I'm planting. Yeah, Amen. Amen. That's true. Hallelujah, Jesus. Verse 12. And Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hasted to his house mourning and having his head covered. He was running. He was shamed. He was embarrassed. Look at that. I feel humiliated. I, mean, I feel this big. But the best is yet to come. Amen. For you. Verse chapter 7, then we are closed down to the Bible. Hallelujah. And then Haman went home and he told his wife, and look verse 13. And Haman told Zeres, his wife, she was the one who told him to build a hang the gallow, and all his friends, everything that had fallen them. Then said the wise men and Zeres, his wife, unto him, If Mordecai be of the seed of the Jew, before thou whom thou hast begun to fall, Thou shalt not prevail against him, but shall surely fall before him. You're wasting your time, Mordecai. If he's one of those who we say he is, you're not going to win. So the healers who praying and wishing bad on the kingdom of God and on the church, you're wasting your time. Same thing the Pharisees said about Jesus. Leave him alone. If it's a God, you can't do nothing about it anyway. So if the God that you serve 
is the God. Why friend? If the Holy Ghost you have and the power that's in you is of God, why friend? Come on. And the anointing on your life and the path and the things that God has told you He's going to do in your life and you believe it and receive it, why friend? But the king wasn't finished. Verse, chapter 7, verse 1. So the king and Haman came to the banquet with Esther and the queen. And the king said again unto Esther on the second day of the banquet, a wine, what is thy petition, Queen Esther? And it shall be granted thee. What is thy request? And it shall be performed even a half of the king. You see, the king ain't forgot. The king still realized, he said, now look. I know I made a promise to you. I know you said you was going to tell me. He said, I want to know. Here's what happened. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I have found favor in thy sight, O king, and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. This is the first time that Queen Esther acknowledged her lineage to the Jews. You said it already said, it is what it is. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. We all going to have our tests to stand for the Lord. And sometimes it might be a crunch time, sometimes it might be a decision to make, and we're going to have to make that decision unto the Lord. And she said, this is what the deal is, King. Hallelujah, Jesus. She said, for we are soul. I and my people to be destroyed. He said, Haman, she didn't say his name yet. She said, a bounty has been put on our head. And it was told that all the Jews must die and they're going to get paid 10,000 pieces of silver. To be slain and to perish. But if we have been sold for buying men and bond women, I have held my tongue, although the enemy could not contravail the king's damage. She said, she said, I had said nothing before king, but I had to come unannounced. This was too serious because I had to warn off the damage that was going to be done to my people. And even me telling you this, I understand if you get upset with me and you want to perish, kill me with them, but I've already made up my mind. But I'm coming in the anointing and the power of God, and I believe that faith is still with me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Well, verse 5, here we go. Then King Ezra's answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he? Cool. And where is he that doeth presume in his heart to do so? King ready to take care of you. ready to protect the queen. Who want to hurt you? Who want to kill your family? Who want to kill? What kind of man gonna put, put this in his heart? And here come the answer in verse six. Wrong place <laughs> at the right time. Ooh, that's the thought. It was the wrong place and the wrong time to go and talk to the king. And here you go, verse six. And Esther said, "The adversary and enemy is this wicked." Haman. Haman didn't know she knew. Can you imagine? First, he was humiliated for riding Mordecai in the parade. Then, at the banquet, in the midst of the king, he probably just eating and think everything is all right. She's telling the king this, and then all of a sudden he listening and he looking and saying, "Where's she going with this?" Mordecai, Esther. Oh no, they can. Yeah. <laughs> and you won't get it. And this is what happened. Huh. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. Jumped out all the way to nine. And Hebronon, one of the chamberlains, said before the king, Behold also, the gallows fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, standing in the house of Haman. 
In other words, Hannah had a gallow meeting for Mordecai in the front of his house. He said, we're going to hang him, and while he's dead, I'm going to look at it, and I'm going to laugh at it, and I'm going to get him up from my side. Then said the king, then the king said, hang him thereon. Talk about Haman. So they hang Haman on the gallows that he prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath pacified. In other words, the king was cool after that. <laughs> Going back to my topic, wrong place at the wrong time. Queen Esther, she had a challenge. She had a challenge to go before the king and take the chance of the king rejecting her and killing her. But with God's help, and the prayer and fasting, she was able to overcome and break the rules of the law for the kingdom's sake. Yeah. I'm not telling you to break the law, but in the spiritual realm, God will put you in awkward positions where you will have decisions to make. And he will have you in places where you might think it's not time to say nothing. But it is. It might not be time to pray, but it might. It might not be time to get up and walk out this business meeting, but it might. God will take care. You just got to do what God has encouraged you to do. And when you do right, right will come out in Jesus' name. The wrong place at the wrong time end up being the right place at the right time for Esther and the children of Israel. We love you, Jesus. Be blessed and be saved.